This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from Aperoa's first and only climate positive certified renewable electricity provider. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aperoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup of news in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thanks for joining me. On Wednesday this week, Tesla published its second quarter results, setting new records for the firm, hitting expectations from Wall Street, but lessening its automotive margins. Making 479,700 vehicles its best quarter yet, Tesla also delivered more cars than ever before, with 466,140 new cars delivered worldwide. That's streets ahead of its rivals. Its gross automotive margin fell, though, from 19.3% in Q1 to 18.2% in Q2. That's low for Tesla in recent years, but it is still very healthy compared to much of the auto industry. Tesla also celebrated its Model Y becoming the best-selling car in Europe for the first half of the year and shared pictures of its first release candidate Cybertruck off the production line, which unfortunately appears to have a misaligned door. Tesla stock fell following the quarterly earnings call. Sticking with quarterly results, Volvo Cars shared its quarterly figures this week, and while it is producing orders of magnitude fewer vehicles than Tesla, EVs helped it boost its profits. Recording improved overall revenue compared to the previous quarter, Volvo said its revenue grew from 71.3 billion Swedish kroner to 102.2 billion Swedish kroner. Volvo reported record electric vehicle sales for the quarter, with EV sales up 178% year on year, and EV sales during Q2 accounted for 16% of its total vehicle sales. There's a long way to go before the majority of Volvos sold are all electric, but the company says it's hopeful it's soon to sell EX90 and just revealed EX30 will dramatically increase its EV sales. Just a week after I commented on how it felt a bit weird Ford was discounting the F-150 Lightning in some markets rather than lowering the price across the board, Ford did just that. On Monday, it announced that it had completed upgrades to its Rouge production facility where the F-150 Lightning is made, upgrades that will dramatically lower the overheads associated with producing its electric pickup. As a consequence, it said that it was lowering the price of the F-150 Lightning by between six and ten thousand US dollars or equivalent, depending on the model chosen. This is great news for would-be F-150 Lightning pickup truck owners, but some of you have been busy in the comments stating Ford is in trouble and only lowered its prices because of Tesla's Cybertruck. There's zero evidence we can find to back that statement up. Sticking with pickup trucks, Rivian was in New York earlier this week, showcasing the first of its dual-motor R1T models to existing customers and reservation holders. Unlike models it's made to date, which included quad-motor setups, the dual-motor R1Ts utilize a single motor for each axle. And while there are two fewer motors, Rivian wanted to make sure that it hit home the fact that the dual-motor variants are still very capable, highlighting the dual-motor performance variant in a new YouTube video. All also this week, Rivian heard that the Georgia Supreme Court had declined to hear a case against incentives and abatements being offered it by the state to build a factory there. This means that it now has the green light to begin construction on its new $5 billion Georgia facility. Tesla's famous All Our Patent Are Belong To You blog post of 2014 pledged that Tesla would not sue companies that wanted, quote, in good faith, end quote, to use its technology. But as we've noted plenty of times, the actual legal text of the pledge was a little more complex, and this week we saw an example of that with Tesla suing an Australian supercapacitor company in court for an undisclosed sum of money. In this case, the lawsuit intends to protect the patents Tesla now owns following its acquisition of Maxwell Technologies, a supercapacitor company, which itself has been in a long back-and-forth legal battle with that rival supercapacitor firm, CapXX. We will keep you posted as this case develops. 
General Motors' Cami assembly plant in Ingersoll, Ontario, Canada, surprised everyone recently by announcing it would be shuttering for a month because of battery shortages. The facility responsible for assembling bright drop delivery vehicles for the Canadian market reportedly has more than four years' worth of orders to work through, but can't get enough Ultium battery packs to meet demand. Right now, GM is only producing its next-generation Ultium battery packs at one facility in Ohio, USA, and has to split packs between four different vehicles and production lines, the Hummer EV, Cadillac Lyric, a bright drop delivery truck and soon to launch Chevrolet Equinox. At the launch of the gasoline Chevrolet Traverse this week, GM's North American president Rory Harvey said GM is working on fixing the bottlenecks as quickly as possible. We are big fans of small compact electric vehicles on this channel and while there are all these new big SUVs and pickup trucks that have a place in the market, so do do smaller models. As a former owner of not one but five different microcars, I'm happy to hear the news that the diminutive Microlino, a modern day reimagining of the iconic four wheel Isetta bubble car with an all electric drivetrain, will soon be expanding its sales into France. While it's got a limited top speed of 56 miles per hour, approximately 90 kilometers per hour, and officially classifies as an L7e quadricycle in Europe, I think it's going to be very popular popular in France, whose voiture sans permis classification played a massive part in making lower speed license free quadricycles a thing, and in turn EVs like the Twizy, Microlino and many more. It promises to be the most aerodynamic electric vehicle to enter into production and its physical shape has very much been driven by efficiency. And this week, well, actually last, but we didn't put it in last week's show, Aptera took its EV to the wind tunnel. To date, much of Aptera's iterative design process has taken place virtually, with the team spending a long time running mathematical modelling simulations to give the Aptera the 0.13 coefficient of drag it currently has. But with Aptera pushing ahead with plans to finalise vehicle design and prepare for mass production, it headed to Italy to put one of its gamma pro prototypes into the wind tunnel operated by legendary Italian design house Pininfarina. The goal? To make sure the production Aptera is efficient as possible, something which, disclaimer, as a reservation holder, I'm very excited to see. For a full seven years now, Tesla has offered customers the option to lock in future autonomous vehicle capabilities in their car for a lump sum at the time of purchase. That fee, which has steadily grown to a $15,000 add-on for every new Tesla today isn't exactly small fry. And many Tesla owners who paid up years ago now feel cheated because they purchased something they haven't yet been able to use. On top of that, Tesla hasn't traditionally allowed customers to transfer FSD capabilities, as it's now called, between cars. This week, Tesla confirmed that until the end of the quarter, it's now allowing existing customers looking to upgrade their Tesla to a new model will be able to transfer FSD packages to their new car, but only if they order it before the end of this quarter. That said, there is still no firm set date for FSD launch. That said, there's still no firm date set for FSD. It's better than nothing, but it's still very much not what many owners want. Before we get to the last two stories, I have a quick question. Are you in the market for a new EV? Because if you are, and you are in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, how you can join up with charging providers and, of course, how to get clean, green, renewable energy at home. So follow the link below and start that journey today. We and other news outlets have noticed that there's been something of an increase in the amount of anti-EV sentiment coming our way in the last few months. Some of that has come from politicians around the world who view electric vehicles as quote-unquote woke, and some of it has come from the auto industry, specifically executives backlashing against newer, lower emission requirements for cars. And while the oil industry did for a while appear to be following plans to reduce their emissions, we've also seen that reneged in recent months, with multiple oil companies putting profits before Planet. This week, we saw a new advert from Exxon-owned oil brand Mobil One and some outlets claim it's anti-EV because it shows people walking around trailing massive cables behind them. For what it's worth, though, 
that cabling is not charging cable, it's Cat5 networking cable. Still, we still think it sucks. And finally, the EV9 is Kia's biggest electric vehicle to date, with seating for up to three rows of people and an interior that's designed for family life. So to advertise the launch of the EV9 in Europe, we assumed that we'd see something family friendly, like maybe a cute EV ad featuring the EV9 taking on family life to prove it had what it takes. What we got instead was model Jody Kidd, who, along with a photo shoot next to the EV9, agreed to be, quote, electrocuted, end quote, by one million volts of electricity to celebrate the car's launch. Dressed in a chainmail suit, basically a human Faraday cage, she became a human conductor, but the press release, which described her as getting a million volts passing through her and being electrocuted, first, it's not the way to advertise a new EV, and second... Electrocution is a one-way street, if you get my drift. Yeah. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go, though, do make sure you've hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news from this channel. And if you haven't switched yet, it's high time you did. Switch to Aotearoa's first and only climate-positive certified renewable electricity provider. It is super easy to make the switch, and in doing so, you will wean Aotearoa off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep it beautiful for generations to come. I will be back next week, as usual, for another Roundup show, but in the meantime, don't forget to check out the latest videos from Gavin Kiwi Evie Shoebridge on this channel. He's been making some crackers lately, and if you haven't watched them, you need to. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kagite! See you next time.